In this video, we'll be seeing 5 incredibly annoying things that I absolutely hate about GNOME Desktop and 5 pro-level tweaks that fix these issues. GNOME Desktop, it's beautiful, it's modern and it's the most popular Linux desktop. But let's be honest, it is extremely opinionated and the default experience can be quite irritating. For example, there are no desktop icons, no window control buttons and these aren't bugs, they are deliberate design choices. So today, I'm going to show you 5 such things that I truly hate about Vanilla Gnome and the simple but essential fixes that let you take back control and build a desktop that actually works for you. By the end of this video, we'll polish up Gnome desktop and turn it into its best version. Let's jump right in. Starting off with my biggest issue with Gnome, the Gnome desktop space here is an utter wasteland. By default, it doesn't let you add any application icons or files. Literally every person on this planet has grown up using desktop icons, but on GNOME, the most popular Linux desktop environment, you can't do that out of the box. Then what's the use of this large space? Car parking? For most people, the desktop is kinda a temporary workspace. You keep your working files here, you keep your most used applications here, and that gives you quick access to stuff you need and boosts productivity. With GNOME, this is wasted real estate, that to prime location. But because GNOME is super customizable, this can be fixed. For that, we'll be using a GNOME extension called Desktop Icons NG or DING for short. GNOME extensions are add-ons for your desktop, just like browser extensions. They bring in additional functionality. They can also change GNOME's behavior and appearance to a deep level, and there are thousands of these. While you can install GNOME extensions from their website, I prefer to use the Extensions Manager application. Install it using the commands given in the description below, then open it, search for desktop icons ng and just click on install. Quick note, this feature is already enabled on Ubuntu but on other distros like Fedora and Arch Linux, you'll have to install this extension. Once it's done, you can just go ahead and add your files to your desktop by dragging and dropping them and vice versa. You can also move your files from your desktop to locations in your file manager. And just like that, the desktop wasteland or parking space is officially reclaimed. I don't even have words for how and why the developers didn't want to make this an out of the box thing. Next up is the mystery of the missing window control buttons. In GNOME, application windows only have a close button, no minimize, no maximize, which is baffling for anyone coming from Windows or Mac OS. While I understand that GNOME has its own workflow with workspaces and keyboard shortcuts, still, removing these fundamental multitasking controls is a huge pain point for newcomers. The ability to minimize or maximize is essential and taking it away feels less like a thoughtless design choice and more like a decision that actively hinders your workflow. Thankfully, the fix for this is simple. We just need a crucial utility that every GNOME user should have in their back pocket, the GNOME Tweaks tool. Install it with the commands in the description, open the app, go to window title bars and simply flick these switches for maximize and minimize. You can also choose the orientation of these window controls. With just a flick, your windows have their essential controls back, making the desktop usable again. By the way, if you haven't already, check out my course Linux Mastery Express. I've designed this course to level up your Linux skills very quickly. With this course, you'll get so comfortable using the terminal commands that your friends will think you're a Linux wizard. You'll get perfect with the most used, most useful commands and also learn advanced things like using the vEditor and shell scripting as well. Linux Mastery Express, link in the description, do check it out. The next one is infuriating, especially if you use apps like Discord, Slack or Steam. You launch your app, you get set up and then you click the X to close the main window, assuming it will keep running in the background. But on GNOME, the app doesn't just minimize, it vanishes. It's like it has been sucked into a digital black hole. The application is still running though consuming memory and CPU cycles like a ghost in the machine, but you have absolutely no way to interact with it. There's no icon in the top bar to show you its status, no way to access its menu. This isn't a feature, it's a fundamental breakdown in usability for some of the most popular applications people use every day. The fix, once again, is a simple extension that restores this basic functionality. Head to the extension manager and install app indicator and case status notifier item support. The moment you enable it and restart your app, the icon appears in the top bar, finally giving you back control over your background applications. You see what's running on your computer and you can right click on these icons to see the options. 
GNOME Desktop is a very premium and polished user interface. That's undeniable. The animation effects here especially feel very fluid and they really enhance the visual experience when you open the app grid or jump into the workspaces. See how smooth it all feels. But if you compare the animation effects of other desktops like Cinnamon, KD Plasma or even Windows, the time it takes for the app menu to pop up and become usable after the super button is pressed, comparatively that can take a bit on GNOME desktop. Now this is by design. Because GNOME's app grid is a full screen one, it doesn't just pop up in a corner, so the longer animation duration makes sense here. But when you are deep in work, it can start to feel slow and kinda sticky. When you are in the zone, the split second delay waiting for the animation to finish, you start noticing the delay and it can start to feel a tad bit slow. You just want things to happen now. Thankfully, there's a brilliantly simple fix called Impatience Extension. It does exactly what the name implies. Once installed, you get a single slider that lets you crank up the animation speed, making everything feel instantaneous. Opening the app grid, switching workspaces, it all becomes lightning fast and super responsive, turning that smooth but slow feeling into pure speed. Initially, this might make GNOME feel weird, but you'll get adjusted to it. Imagine a Linux newcomer using this for the first time. How does he open the menu? How does he open the file manager or any other app? The desktop is completely devoid of a visible application menu or an app bar. There's no obvious starting point here. Sure, an experienced user will just know how to get around. I'm not talking about that. But when you see this for the first time, this desktop feels incomplete. GNOME lacks a persistent always on application dock or an application menu or a launcher of any kind. This dock called the dash here comes up only when you press the super button. What's the point even? How do you see all the running applications at a glance or even switch between them? It's a two-step process here. Opening your favorite applications and switching between running apps, it should be a single click process as it is on literally every other desktop user interface. To rectify this, again, we need to install an extension called dash to dock, which makes this dock persistent on the desktop. Now you can open your favorite applications with a single click and also switch between running apps seamlessly. Wow. That was a rant, wasn't it? I can get cranky sometimes. To say that GNOME desktop is opinionated is an understatement. GNOME wants you to do things a certain way. It has its own workflow and it is quite different from other desktop user interfaces. But let's take a deep breath. And if you think about it, fixing these annoyances was also ridiculously easy, wasn't it? We didn't need to tweak any configuration files. We didn't need to run any scripts. I could fix these issues with a single click. And that's really the selling point of GNOME Desktop. Sure, you could go ahead and use GNOME the GNOME way and trust me, that can be quite powerful as well. Press the super button for everything and once you get used to it, it can be super productive. But if you don't want to use GNOME that way, GNOME gives you options. With these extensions, you could transform GNOME into anything you can imagine. So was I harsh on GNOME? Yeah, maybe. But I hope you came out with a better GNOME with this video. I hope this video helped you make your GNOME more to your liking. If it did, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and also give me a big thumbs up. And if you're interested in learning up your Linux skills, the link to my course Linux Mastery Express is given in the description below. It's designed to teach you Linux and take you from zero to hero in the shortest time possible. You'll be using Linux Tech Pro within a matter of hours, so definitely check that out. Next up. Check out the top 10 hottest Linux apps that you should be using in 2025. It's got some really cool ones, so definitely don't miss that. Alright, this is Linux Techs, signing out.